Hi guys, it's Simone and today I'm going to show you how to do the brioche pearl or burp. BRP is the abbreviation you will normally see in a pattern. And um, I'm going to first show you and then explain it. And this of course is for continental knitters. I will try to show you as well for the throwers among you. Um, it may be a bit awkward because I'm not that good at the throwing thing, as you may have seen in my first podcast. However, so um, when you're looking at brioche, you always have two rows that you're doing in order to get one complete row because you're only working half the stitches and the other half is going to get worked with the second color. So I'm here on my second row. I'm on the pearl row, which is the ones that are sort of receding into the back here on the front. This um, sh this shawl is Lita and it will come out soon. It may be out by the time this video goes live. And it has a couple of other stitches in there as well as just a regular brioche stitch. So don't get confused by these fun looking things. I will explain those in a later video. But for right now, the basics. So for your brioche pearl, each brioche pearl, each brioche stitch has the stitch itself and a yarn over that belongs to it. So when you're counting the stitches, these are considered one. And when you're working them, they're also considered one. And you're working the pearl using both these stitches. So you're purling, essentially you're purling the yarn over together with its stitch. And then the in-between stitches, the one that have already been worked on your previous row, on the knit row, you're slipping with a yarn over. So it's yarn over slip one and then you're going to need to bring the yarn back to the front for your purl stitch and purl the yarn over with its stitch together um, a lot of times these are referred to collared stitches like the yarn over ends up hanging on the stitch as if it has like a little clothes hanger or a collar on it so yarn over slip you're always slipping the stitches as if to purl because you've already worked the knit stitches on the row before and you're going to work them again on the next half row i guess is what you want to call it on the back side so yarn over slip bring the yarn back to the front for your purl purl the, the stitch together with its yarn over again yarn over slip and purl the stitch together yarn over See, now when you're a continental knitter, it actually is really fast and really quick to just bring the yarn forward and slip the stitch all in one fell swoop and then go on to your purl stitch. So here again, you have the yarn in the front for your purl stitch like you're normally purling and then you're just going to purl the stitch with its yarn over together. You can always tell when you're working brioche which stitch you're going to work and which stitch you're going to slip. When you're looking at your needle, like here, you see how the majority of the stitches, don't ignore this increase here, <laughs> the majority of the stitches here is blue, right? There's predominantly, there are more blue stitches than orange stitches. So that means you're working with the orange yarn. When your stitches on the needle are more of the other color, it, they're always going to be more of the other color on your needle. So you're going to, if you're at the end of the row and you don't know where to go, you're going to look at the stitches and say, okay, well, most of them, or like two-thirds of them are blue, I'm going to work with the orange. If two-thirds of them are orange, like at the end of this row, it's going to look like this, you're going to work with the blue. And as you're coming across the row, if you have a single stitch, that's the one you're slipping with a yarn over. And if you have one that has a yarn over going over it or next to it, that's the one you're working either as a brioche pearl, like here, or a brioche knit if you're on the opposite row. So slip. So again, for continental knitters, once you have the hang of this, you can literally just slip, bring the yarn to the front after your purl or leave it there because the purl makes it be in the front anyway. Slip your knit stitch with the yarn in the front and then go right back to the purl stitch. So you can see I'm swinging my needle around behind it into the stitch for my purl and through. Slip purl, slip, purl. If you're a thrower, I know it's a bit more involved because your yarn is over here. And as you're slipping, you have to remember to bring the yarn forward. <laughs> Bear with me. Forward first. You're slipping that stitch. Then you bring the yarn over 
as your yarn over and then you need to bring it back to the front like such so it stays over there and then so you have it in place for your pearl which I think works like that right so from here yarn over the needle slip bring the yarn back forward for your pearl stitch I think it is not as awkward if you actually know how to throw. My problem is that, or my problem, well, the thing is that I am from Switzerland and I learned how to knit continental there. And so that's the only way I really know how to knit. I can sort of fake the, um, <laughs> the throwing, but as you can see, it's a bit awkward. So if you can get yourself to work continental, it, brioche knitting is just like doing a slightly funky ribbing. It is really no big deal at all. So again, I'm going to show you again how we're doing the brioche pearl in the continental style. So you're slipping, bring the yarn forward, slip the next stitch, bring the yarn back to the front for your pearl stitch and purl the yarn over and it's stitched together. That's a burp. That's a brioche pearl. Yarn stays in the front of the needle slip the stitch make sure you don't bring it to the front for your purl but that it's actually going around the needle and stays there because you need that yarn over for your next row brioche purl yarn over slip brioche purl slip with the yarn over brioche purl slip with the yarn over here we go friends i hope this helps and i will show you next how we're doing some of the increases in the lita shawl and I hope you enjoy knitting this.